In this video, I want to take a look at the Central Limit Theorem. Now, the Central Limit Theorem is one of, if not the most important result that we have in probability theory. And truthfully, I don't think I can give it the justice within this video to make you fully appreciate why this result is so incredible. However, I am hoping by towards the end of this video, you might start to appreciate some of the beauty of the Central Limit Theorem. So let's start then with a normally distributed random variable. So x follows a normal distribution then with the parameters of mu and sigma squared. And let's consider taking a random sample of n observations of this normally distributed random variable. Then the sample mean x bar is also normally distributed with x bar following a normal distribution with the parameters then of mu and sigma squared over n. And this here is an example of a special result known as the central limit theorem. So the central limit theorem states that the mean of a large random sample taken from any random variable is always approximately normally distributed. And this result is always true regardless of the distribution of the random variable. And we'll see a few more examples of this concept in more detail within the next video. Okay, so let's summarize them. So to summarize here, the central limit theorem states that if x1, x2, x3, so on and so on, up to xn is a random sample of size n from a population with mean mu and variance sigma squared, then x bar here, the sample mean, will be approximately normally distributed with the following parameters here. So mu and sigma squared over n. Okay. And do know here that this is an approximation and as such, the approximation improves as n gets larger. Now, ideally, we are looking for a sample size of at least 30 for the central limit theorem to hold. Now, we might see some practice questions here where that isn't necessarily true. We might have a sample size of, say, 20. But generally speaking, for exam style questions, you will have a sample size of 30 or greater. OK, so that gives us everything that we need here then for our introduction here now to the central limit theorem. Let's take a look then at some practice questions. Let's start off then with question one here. So for question one, we have a sample of size 20 that's taken from a population that is normally distributed with mean 12 and standard deviation four. So for this question, it asks us to find the probability that the sample mean is less than 13. So to start with, let's choose a random variable to model this normal distribution here. So if I choose X here as my random variable, then X will follow a normal distribution with a mean of 12 and a variance here of 4 squared. Okay. Now, we need to use the central limit theorem here because we want the probability that the sample mean is less than 13. So now, if we use the central limit theorem, and I'll abbreviate this here to CLT. Okay, this just means the central limit theorem. Then in that case, the sample mean x bar will be normally distributed. Now for the mean here under the central limit theorem, this will be the same, so this will also be 12. However, do be careful here for the variance now using the central limit theorem, because in this case, the um, variance now will be four squared over the sample size n, which in this case here, my sample size is 20, okay? So we get four squared over 20, like so. Now what we're looking for here is the probability that the sample mean is less than 13. So therefore what we're looking for here is the probability that the sample mean x bar is less than 13. And to find this probability here, all we're going to do is simply use our calculator. So we're going to stats mode, distribution, normal, and then NCD here. And again, it asks for a few different things. So the first thing it asks for is the data type, which in this case would be a variable. So let me just make a note of these over here on the left-hand side. So for the data type, this is a variable. I'll shorten this to var here, just meaning variable. It then asks for the lower and upper value. So lower and upper. Now, in this case, because we're looking for the probability that the sample mean x bar is less than 13, that means 13 is the upper value. So we put 13 as the upper value, and then we need to choose an arbitrarily small value. So I just put minus 999999. Something along those lines is absolutely fine. It then also asks for sigma here and mu. So clearly mu is nice and straightforward. That is just um, 12 here, so the mean is 12. 
However, do be careful here for sigma. So don't forget this is sigma squared. So we want the square root then of 16 over 20, which is the same as the square root of 4 over 5. Let's put the square root of 4 over 5 there. Okay. Input all of those values in, press enter, and then this would give us the probability that the sample mean x bar is less than 13. And hopefully what you get here is 0 0.868 then. Okay. And there we have it. So that gives the solution there to question one. So we just say, look, then at one more question, we have question two, where we have a random variable x, which has a discrete uniform distribution given as follows. We're then told that 50 observations are taken from the random variable x here and their mean x bar is recorded. So all this question wants us to do is find an estimate for the probability that the sample mean x bar is greater than 3.8. So I think the first thing to do here is to set up this distribution in the form of a table. So the probability distribution for this discrete uniform distribution given here. So along the top row, this is the um, values of x here that we can take. So x, so that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then finally 6 here. And then along the bottom row here, this is the respective probabilities then. Okay. So the probability that our random variable x here is equal to some value, little x. Well, as you can see, these are all equal to 1 over 6. Okay, so we get 1 over 6, 1 over 6, 1 over 6. Keep going here. It's a little bit tedious, but you get the idea. Like so. Now, you don't have to do this table here, but I do find it helpful just to set up the probability distribution in the form of a table. Okay. Now to use the central limit theorem here, we need two things. We need the mean, so the expectation of our discrete random variable here, x. And we also need the variance of our discrete random variable, x. So let's start then with finding the expectation, the mean here. So the expectation of x here, hopefully nice and straightforward. Remember, we covered this in chapter 1 for further starts 1 then. So we do 1 times 1 over 6 plus 2 times 1 over 6 plus 3 times 1 over 6, so on and so on. So we said that it's going to be 1 times 1 over 6 plus 2 times 1 over 6 plus 3 times 1 over 6 and so on. And we keep going here until we get to 6 times 1 over 6. Okay. So save a little bit of room here. I'll skip to the end. So 6 times 1 over 6. Now, clearly, we could simplify this calculation here just by factoring out 1 over 6. So I get 1 over 6 times 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. Okay. And if we evaluate this here, 1 over 6 times this summation here, what we get then is 7 over 2. Okay. So we get 7 over 2 or 3.5, whichever you prefer there. So that's the mean, that's the expectation of our discrete random variable x. Now we also need the variance here, so the variance of x. So the way that we find the variance here of our discrete random variable x, well this is equal then to the expectation of x squared minus the expectation of x all squared. So minus the expectation of x all squared. Okay, so we already know the value of this here. We just evaluate that above. So what we need to do then is evaluate the expectation of x squared. So let's start then with finding the expectation of x squared. So in this case here, the expectation of x squared, well, that's going to be 1 squared times 1 over 6 plus 2 squared times 1 over 6 plus 3 squared times 1 over 6, so on and so on. Okay. So we get 1 squared times 1 over 6 plus 2 squared times 1 over 6, so on and so on. So again, I'll just skip to the end here just to save a little bit of time and room. So we then get 6 squared times 1 over 6. And again, just like we saw for the expectation of x, we can simplify this calculation again just by factoring out the 1 over 6 here. So what we get then is 1 over 6 times by 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared all the way up to 6 squared. Okay, so let's write this down here. 
like so. And if we evaluate this here, what do we get then? So um, again, just put this into your calculator. So 1 over 6 times this summation here. Obviously, make sure you include the squares here as you go. And if you do this correctly then, what you should get is 91 over 6. Okay, so we get 91 over 6 there. So therefore, in that case then, so the variance of x here, bar x, this is equal then to the expectation of x squared, which is 91 over 6. So 91 over 6 minus the expectation of x all squared. So in that case, then we minus 3.5 squared here. Um, I'll just do minus 7, 7 over 2 squared. Either's fine. So if you do this on your calculator then, what you should get here is 35 over 12. Okay, so we get 35 over 12 there. So we're pretty much done now. So now let's use the central limit theorem. So use the central limit theorem. Again, I'll abbreviate this to CLT. Okay. So in that case, then the sample mean X bar here will be approximately normally distributed with parameters then. Well, the mean is just the expectation of X. So that's going to be 7 over 2 or 3.5, whichever you prefer. So I'll write it as 7 over 2. Now, for the second parameter here, remember, this is the variance of our random variable x here divided by the sample size, which in this case is 50. We had 50 observations. So I get 35 over 12, all over 50, like so. Now, what we want here is the probability that the sample mean x bar is strictly greater than 3.8. So therefore, the probability the sample mean x bar is greater than 3.8 so to evaluate this probability here we're going to simply use our calculator again so again we go into stats mode here so stats mode distribution normal and again ncd here now again the data type is a variable so let me just write these underneath so data type as we said is a variable now for the lower value and the upper value here, again, let me just write these down. So we have lower and upper. Now for this example here, we're looking for the probability that the sample mean X bar is greater than 3.8. So now this value here, the 3.8 goes into the lower value. So put 3.8 there as the lower value. For the upper value, now we just pick an arbitrarily large value. I'll just put a load of nines there, like so. Now for sigma and mu here, so sigma and mu, well, just be careful with sigma. So sigma in this case is the square root of this because this is sigma squared. So we have the square root then of 35 over 12 all over 50. Okay. And then for the mean here, um, mu, well, that would simply be a 7 over 2. Okay, so that is for the mean there. Input those values and then press enter. And if you do this correctly, then what you should find here for the probability that the sample mean x bar is greater than 3.8 is equal to 0 0.107 there. Okay, so we get 0 0.107 there. And there we have it. So that gives the solution to question two. And that brings us to the end of this video on the central limit theorem.